What about beneficial mutations? This is another really, really popular one. And again, we just got done talking about mutations and what they can and cannot do. So let's focus on that a little bit more. Do they add information to the genome? Because that's absolutely required if you're going to go from molecules to man. The facts. Beneficial mutations do not exist. Now, before you all go, oh, okay, what is she saying? Right? The reason I'm saying that is because it's really not the proper way to say that. Beneficial mutations do not exist. However, beneficial outcomes of mutations in specific environments do exist. Okay? It really depends on the context whether or not a mutation is a good or a bad thing. The most primo example of that is antibiotic resistance in bacteria. When there are antibiotics around, that mutation is a good thing. It helps it resist the antibiotic. If you move it into an environment without antibiotics, guess what? It becomes a bad thing. Okay? It cannot compete as well. It's not as fit, so it does worse. So it depends on the environment whether or not a mutation is a good or a bad thing. So there are beneficial outcomes, but not beneficial mutations. I right? hope everybody's clear on that. Mutations only alter current genetic information. They have never ever been observed to add genetic information. They can only change what is there. Right? Now keep that in mind. I have a lot of papers come across my desk of supposedly mutations that have added genetic information. And I've read them all, and I've looked at them all, and never once have I seen one that has added genetic information. They just don't do that. Instead, they decrease genetic information. They take away from it. Now, that's not to say that can't be a good thing. In a specific environment, it can be, like I talked about with antibiotic resistance. But overall, you're degenerating, OK? We're all a bunch of mutants. <laughs> um, we're all degenerating slowly over time. Uh, so that's what's happening. Mutations lead to the decrease in the overall fitness of the organism. May be beneficial in this environment, but not so much over here. And so uh, slow degeneration occurs. Okay, another famous one you hear about is Richard Linsky and his work with E. coli. Richard Linsky is a molecular ecologist at Michigan State University. And he has done some work with the little E. coli bacteria that inhabit our gut. Um, he's cultured 12 lines of E. coli beginning in 1988. Okay? Now, that's a long time ago. Um, and he's had over 44,000 generations of bacteria that have been generated in his lab as a result of that. And some pretty interesting things have come out of that. And every so once in a while, he publishes a paper. And this is what um, Jerry Coyne, who is an anti-creationist, pro-evolutionist, very much so, had this to say. Linsky's experiment is also yet another poke in the eye for anti-evolutionists, notes Jerry Coyne, an evolutionary biologist at the University of Chicago. The thing I like most is it says you can get these complex traits evolving by a combination of unlikely events, he says. That's just what creationists say can't happen. Now, are complex traits evolving by a combination of unlikely events? Well, let's take a look at what Linsky found, because you can read his papers and you can see what he indeed discovered. Well, the fitness of the bacteria that are in the lab now are, is greater than that of the parental strain. The, the, the parent bacteria that he started out with, the bacteria has now, are more fit. <laughs> Imagine that. They've adapted to life in the lab. Okay? They like it there. Um, but you know what? How have they adapted to life in the lab? They've lost stuff. Okay? That doesn't help you. That doesn't add information. They've lost the ability to degrade certain sugars. They've lost the ability to move. They've lost their flagella genes. And they've lost certain regulatory controls. Hmm. Of course they have. Why should they bother being able to degrade multiple kinds of um, sugars when they only have one kind they're ever being fed? Why should they bother to move? And they don't have to move. Food comes to them. Okay? They don't need these things, so they throw them out. There's no point in making them if they never need them. So. Um, they've adapted to the lab conditions. That's great. They're more fit in the lab. But try putting them in the soil and see what happens. <laughs> they die, okay? They don't do very well. They cannot compete with the regular normal E. coli that's out there. There's a trade-off. Uh, they're more fit for one environment, but less fit for another, as we already said. So this isn't a poke in, our, in the eye, in our eye, but a feather in our cap, right? It's exactly what we'd expect to see, and that's exactly what we do see. They should adapt. And Kevin Anderson and I had this to say, the beneficial mutations, according, dealing with Linsky's work, the beneficial mutations are very environmentally specific, and a change in this environment often negates the benefit of a mutation. When repeatedly cultivated in a constant environment, it is not surprising that an organism would reduce its genome of some unused genes and functions. Why bother with those things? In other words, such a reduction can be beneficially selected only as long as the organism remains in that constant environment. Ultimately, the genetic effect of these mutations is a loss 
a function useful for one type of environment as a trade-off for adaptation to a different environment. Okay? So yeah, it's great for over here, but not so great over here. Okay? It's trading off, so to speak. So evolution, not evolution. It's not a gain of information. You didn't gain any structures, and you didn't gain any functional systems. It's adaptation. You're losing functional systems. You're losing information. You're losing structures. But it's very specific in relationship to the environment. And if you want to read more about this, this paper is located on the Answers in Genesis website. So if you Google, or if you put in our search engine, probably protom and uh, beneficial mutations or something like that, um, you'll get this paper will come up and you can read that for more information. So what can we say? Well, some mutations do provide beneficial outcomes in certain environments. That's absolutely true. But mutations have never been observed to add information. We're looking at the best of the best, okay? This is the best, and it's not doing it. Only decrease information, never add to it. So a trade-off occurs as organisms adapt to an environment. Yes, they're better here, but not so well over here. But the overall fitness is decreasing. They're being very, um, becoming very specific for a certain environment. Beneficial mutations, therefore, cannot be a mechanism for evolution because that requires a gain of information. And as we've seen, even with our best examples, they're leading to a loss of information.